Hello everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The Old Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. There's a strange little rhyme I'm sure most of you have heard. Last night I met upon the stair a little man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish, I wish he'd go away. This is a story of a house that refused to stay dead. Oh, Judge? Yes, Benny Lou. Who lives in the house at the bend of the river, but down by the bottomlands under Tully Ridge? What'd you say? Just asking about the house at the bend of the river. Why, you couldn't have seen a house from Tully Ridge and not by the bend of the river. There's no house there. Our mystery drama, The Phantom House, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Marion Seldes and Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Once upon a time, there was a couple with entirely different tastes. One liked exotic things. I'll have a banana split with chicken livers. While the other was practical and down to earth. Uh, American cheese on white. Invariably, the exotic things she liked, he hated. Oh, look at this, a corduroy rug. Don't you just love it? No. And the practical things he liked, she loathed. I love it. I hate it. This went on at length until one day after disagreeing on how to get there... It's a right left. They went to a Buick dealer and were invited to inspect a Buick Skyhawk. She found the low, lean styling and things like the bucket seats and standard four-speed manual transmission exciting and exotic. Oh, it's so exciting and exotic. While he found the V6 engine, the practical hatchback, very down-to-earth. Oh, how practical and down-to-earth. Unfortunately, while they agreed on a Skyhawk, they couldn't agree on which Skyhawk. Air conditioning. Heater. White walls. Black walls. Home wheels. Hubcaps. I want a stereo. We have a radio at home. Buick Skyhawk. It's exotic. It's practical. It's a little Buick for everybody. I'll drive. Uh, I'll drive. No, no, I'll drive. I'll drive. I'm driving. How do you do? And now, a tale of what happened when last I patrolled the highways. Hey, good buddies. Anybody out there got his ears on? This is the Red Baron with some red-hot information. You got the Silver Fox. Come on. Hey, hey, Silver Fox. How'd you like to trademark that handle? Hey, for only five bucks, I can guarantee you no one else will be able to use it on the air. Pull over at the next exit. I'll fill you in. Hold on just a minute, Silver Fox. You're talking to the man from the Better Business Bureau. Don't let the CB Radio trademark scheme take your money. With the millions of CB radios in use, it's almost impossible to keep other people from using your handle. That's a big 10 for good buddy, and thank you. You may have saved me from a real bear trap. And that's the way it was. In 1880, the world was a very different place than the one we know today. No automobiles, no planes, no radio, no TV. Most people were born, lived their lives, and died within a radius of 50 to 100 miles. To get places, you walked, rode a horse, or a horse and buggy, or if you went beyond that 100-mile radius, the railroad. And what an adventure that was. To ride, swaying and bouncing behind that iron monster with its hiss of steam and its great proud plume of black coal smoke curling away in the wind down the length of the train. Are we still in the district of Columbia, Marianne? Well, no, Betty Lou. I reckon since we just crossed over the Potomac, we're in Virginia. Look, it's so fast. Oh, I love it. 
I wish this old train would go twice as fast as now. I hope you don't get your wish. It's fast enough for me. And you better watch your language, young lady. Oh, listen, it's who's giving herself airs. My big sister, a whole year and a half older. Mama made me promise to remind you. You don't want Papa to get a bad report of you from Uncle Thurman? Oh, fiddlesticks to old Judge Thurman. What can he do anyway with Papa and Mama thousands of miles away in Europe? Well, even if he can, it isn't polite. And it certainly isn't ladylike to take the name of the Lord in vain. Oh, Mary, this is the 20th century. I don't know what to do with you. Why don't you stop being such a prude and have some fun? I am not a prude. Oh, yes, you are. Why do you have to draw your hair back so tight? Why don't you fluff it up some? And do you have to wear those awful eyeglasses? Well, you know I don't see properly without them. But you'd look so much better. Oh, I bet if the judge knew what he was taking on in you, he'd maybe have thought twice before inviting us under his roof while Mom and Papa were over in Paris, France. I wonder what he's like. I don't remember him that well. Oh, maybe you're the one that needs the glasses. You saw him only two years ago. I didn't pay much heed. My, my. A man you didn't notice? Oh, <laughs> too old. <laughs> oh, that's an awful lot of Virginia. How long is it going to take us to get there? To Richmond? Well, we'll be there for hours. <sighs> How long after we get there till we get to Great Oaks and get settled and all? Hey, I don't know. I have never been there either. I bet we don't get there till dark. Oh, such a long time. What are we going to do till then? I thought you said this was fun. It was. Oh, but this engineer doesn't go fast enough. Oh, look, on the other side of the train, a fox hunt. Oh, let me through so I can look. Better Lou, watch out. I'm just trying to get across before the... Oh, oh, uh, oh I, I'm sorry. No, oh, pardon me. Oh, I've lost my eyeglasses. Allow me, ma'am. Perhaps I can find them. Oh, thank you. Oh, I want to thank you, too. <laughs> it was certainly nice to run into you. Well, I am certainly glad that I bumped into you. Well, I, I, I don't believe we've met, have we? I'm sorry, but without my eyeglasses... We haven't been introduced formally. Uh, Ma'am, your eyeglasses. Oh, thank you. Oh, my, they're so dirty. I've got to clean them. Are you going to Richmond? Matter of fact, I am. Well, that's where we're going. Betty, don't be so forward. This gentleman is a stranger. That's right, ma'am. So if you and your sister will excuse me... Thank you for finding my eyeglasses. The pleasure was mine. Well, I declare, you are so... so stupid. What are you talking about? That handsome man, and you just shucked him off after he was nice and all? He was a stranger, Betty Lou. We found your old eyeglasses for you. I thanked him. Maybe if you'd put them on and had a good look at him, you'd have done more. I mean, that man was handsome. Now, I don't suppose we'll ever see him again. I wonder how he knew we were sisters. Thurman. Uh, what's that, honey? You gonna fetch them two little girls is coming. Time you had the carriage brought round, long ride to Richmond. You got fly swatter? Now you knows I never goes anywhere without it's hanging from my belt. You better get it in your hand. You got an old blue tail climbing in here on the porch. And if you just open your eyes, you could see the swatter in my hand, and his time is at hand. Like yours. You better stir yourself, Judge. Yeah, I reckon. I just wonder why I ever let myself in for this. Why, you bring back some life around here. Something new and young to perk us all up. Yeah, aren't we getting just a bit old for that, Hattie? Well, maybe these young'uns around can change you. What we need here. Ain't never been the same since Master Bridge took himself off to college all those years. Oh, how I wish that boy were back here. You ain't heard nothing from him, Judge, sir. I know he... He doesn't write that often, Hattie. Ever since I had to tell him I wasn't his own father. You never should have told him. I had to, Hattie. He has legal rights. Well, well, the Lord provides. Shall I have Jim bring the carriage round? Here, yeah, just as soon as you're ready. Me? Well, I can't handle two 20-something-year-old girls by myself. You've got to come along. Judge, I can't leave things alone here for three hours. They are three hours back. i got things to be done. Well, I need you more than you are needed here. <laughs> you know, I ain't been in Richmond in 
pretty near to 15 years. Put your hat on, Betty Lou. Yes, Mary Ann. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Where's my hat pin? Here. Oh, are we in the station? Pretty near. What about our luggage? Oh, there'll be porters take care of that. Suppose the judge isn't there. I'm sure he will be. Didn't we have a cousin once? I, I mean, a boy one. <laughs> It's hard for you to remember Uncle Thurman from two years back. But you managed to remember Bridge from, what must be, ten. You didn't even notice me then. Young men in their twenties don't pay much attention to twelve-year-old girls. Oh, we're almost in. Don't forget your reticule. Fix your boa. Oh, stop. Sounding like Mama. Well, somebody has to be an authority around you. I wonder what happened to that handsome man. <laughs> Can't you forget men for just one moment? Oh, look. There's Uncle Thurman waiting right there on the platform. Well, well, well. Two lovely and fashionable young ladies. I'm honored. My judge, you're quite a ladies' man. Betty, I'm sure the pleasure is all ours. It's so kind of you to take us in. Why, you brighten my house. Oh, girls, this is Hattie, my housekeeper. Hello, darlings, and welcome. I do. Hattie? Oh, my, I've heard so much about you. From the judge? No, from my papa. Oh, yes, Mr. Stacy. He's a fine gentleman. There I am. What? That young man, he's there, and he's looking... Now, Jim, see into your luggage, ladies. Maybe we better go check if it's all there. Why can't I just... Gosh, of course, Judge, we'll come right along, but... Oh, it doesn't matter. He's disappeared. You coming? Yes, sir. Come along, Betty Lou. Come on, Hattie. I'll be right there, Judge, in just a minute. You can come out now, Master Bridge. You can't hide from Hattie. Who expected to see you or the judge here? Okay, Hattie, I'm caught. What are you going to do about it? Ain't nothing I can do about it, is there, Master Bridge? Except to ask, why are you back if you're not coming home? How can you turn your back on those that love you? There's a phrase at law, Hattie. A moot point. <laughs> Story of my life. Maybe I've come home to see if I could find any way to make it unmoot. I don't understand you. Yeah, it makes two of us. I don't understand much about my life. That's why I came back. I just didn't expect to run into you and... and the judge. Well, we come down to pick up his two nieces. We're going to take them in until their parents come on home from Paris, France. A habit for you and the judge, isn't it, Hattie? Taking in strays? Now, nah, Mr. Bridge... Don't you go being bitter again. Patty, don't you try to tell me what to do. You're not my mama and I wished I was. I would take you across my knees. It was knee. too late for that, Hattie. I guess it was too late for almost anything in my life before it began. Don't you say that to someone who loves you so. Hattie, you're the only person I never want to hurt. And don't let me do it. Well, you can do it so easy. Come home. Please. In my own time. Just don't tell anyone I'm back. See, I can't come home until I find myself. Shut up now, Brigadier. I know I got no right pushing you the way I did, but I just had to do something or explode. Betty Lou Stacy, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Oh, I declare my heart is in my throat. You just scared me about to death the way you took off like that. Whatever got into you? I'm just so plain bored, I can't stand it. Two weeks stuck out here in the country with nothing to do. Well, the ride in is nice. And the countryside is pretty. I already know it like the back of my hand. And it's, it's so barren. Oh, what do you mean, barren? Virginia is beautiful. The countryside, maybe, but where are the people? Just think. We've ridden out every day in all directions and never seen one solitary single other house. Even from up here on the mountain, as far as you can see, there isn't a one. Well, there's no time to dawdle so far from home. It's starting to get dark. Oh, it's clouding over. It looks like rain. Come on, we've got to go. In a minute. Where are you going? I could swear I saw some smoke coming up from down below. <gasps> Marianne, come here, quick. 
What is it, Betty Lou? It's getting dark. Look, we've got down there. By the river, in among the trees. What do you see? You know I don't bring my eyeglasses when I'm riding. What is it? It's a house. <gasps> a beautiful old red brick house. Only it can't be. What do you mean? It wasn't there yesterday. Or a week ago. Or any other times we've been by this way. <gasps> I've got to go right down there and see. Oh, now look at that. We're going to be soaked to the skin. The horses are getting restless. Will you come on? But I want to go and see if there really is a house there. Oh, you're just seeing things. We can't in this dark and rain. There's plenty of time for that tomorrow. Oh, please come on. We're going to get such a soaking. We're lucky we don't catch our death of colds. Land sakes, Miss Betty Lou and Miss Mary Ann, you are most grounded. Now, we got to get you both into hot baths. Where have you been? Having an adventure for a change up on Tully's Ridge. I looked down and I saw a house on the river way below. Where? Right at the bend. <gasps> What's the matter, Hattie? <gasps> Sure. Uh, ain't no time to talk about that. Now, I, I got to take care of you little ladies. Now, now off you go upstairs, Miss Tedlou. I, I reckon I'd better. I got the chills. Uh, coming, Mary Ann? Right with you. Why are you so upset about the house, Hattie? Did you see it too, Miss Mary Ann? No, I didn't really, but then I uh, didn't take my... You wouldn't see it, darling. Because it just isn't there. Not anymore, it ain't. It had seemed a nice, quiet little story, hadn't it? No clanging skeletons, no threats of violence, no brooding terrors. And now, suddenly, there's a hint of... Uh, well, let me put it that before we are finished, Mary Ann's remark may well come true. Except that the death that waits, lurking to be caught will not be from the common cold. Oh, no. Something much more uncommon. I shall return shortly with Act Two. We know a mover who knows about moving. We're going to a new hometown. He cares about the treasures he's packing. With Allied Van Lines, we're safe and sound. Allied Van Lines, our people care. For families choose us to get them I'm Jack Shang, president of Allied Van Lines. I want you to know that all of the people at Allied have made a personal commitment to make your move go smoothly. Our moving counselors, packers, van foremen, and agents are proud that more families choose Allied than any other mover. They're dedicated and committed to doing the best possible job for you. Allied Van Lines, our people care. More families choose us to get them there. See the yellow pages for the Allied Van Lines agent near you. Fill her up, Mrs. Austin. Eugene, I think I need new shock absorbers. Have I got a shock for you, Mrs. Austin? The shocks that conquered Mount Kilimanjaro. Only shocks we carry. In fact, these are the shocks I use in my own personal car. That car, Eugene? Right. The one with the big numbers on the side. You got it. And the wing on the back? Right. Well, why don't we just fill her up, Eugene? I'll have to think about those shock absorbers. You can get shock absorbers anywhere these days. But at Midas, you also get a shock specialist. He tells you whether you really need shocks at all. And if you do, he can choose from any one of our five heavy-duty Midas shocks to make sure you get the right shock for your car and the way you drive. When you need shocks, you need us. Midas, the shock specialist. We have to do a better job. Wherever you live or work in greater Chicago, you're just a few minutes away from one of the 42 conveniently located Midas shops. When your car, foreign or domestic, needs servicing, check the white pages for the shop nearest you. Now, if you had to hazard a guess... Which of the two sisters would you have expected to catch the cold? Headstrong, giddy Betty Lou, or the more demure and quiet Marianne? Ah, <laughs> Which did you say? Did you guess? Well, we certainly don't want to keep you in suspense, do we? And we're not going to. 
Yeah, Betty Lou. That's quite a cold you took to yourself. Oh, don't worry about me, Judge there, but I... I, I, I oh, oh, bless excuse you. Excuse me. Oh, just don't you worry about me. It's just a little old cold. Well, I'm going to leave you to get a little rest. Could I uh, just see Mary Ann for a few minutes first? Uh, all right. But don't you keep her here too long and expose her to your cold. If she didn't get it with me, looks like she's not going to get it at all. Well, anyway... Oh, Judge... Who lives in the house at the bend of the river down by the bottom lands, under Tully Ridge? What'd you say? Just asking about the house at the bend of the river. What house? I saw it last night from the ridge when the storm came on. Oh, you... You couldn't have seen a house from Tully Ridge. And not by the bend of the river. There's no house there. <laughs> Did you see this house Betty Lou was talking about? Well, just... Uh, no, not really. I mean, it was getting dark and the rain started. And it was so far away. No, 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 I that's could... quite all right, my dear. I'm just glad to hear what you tell me. It was, uh... It was just an illusion, you know? There's just no way there could be a house there. Well, I said to Betty Lou, I thought her eyes were playing her a trick... How's she feeling? Oh, well, the doctor has no worries about her so long as she keeps close to bed for a week or so. Harry? Uh, yes, sir, Judge, sir. I think Miss Betty Lou could use some of your hot chicken gumbo soup, huh? Build her up a bit. I got some cooking right now, Judge. All right, then, if you'll excuse me, Mary Ann, I'm, I'm going to my study. I'll leave Betty Lou to you and Hattie. Thank you, sir. I'll come up with you, Hattie. And I'll bring the soup up. Oh, no need. I don't mind the stairs. Maybe I can help make the child comfortable some way. Suppose she should ask about the house. The house? In the bottoms, by the bend in the river. Why, you heard the judge, Miss Mary Ann. Ain't no house there. I know. That's what you said last night. Yes. Only, you also said, not anymore. There's some kind of mystery about the house, Hattie. What is it? If there is, Miss Mary Ann, it ain't something you're going to find me talking about. Uh, oh, now, really? Oh, why did this have to happen to me? I don't know, honey. I'm sorry. What's the weather like? Oh, it's beautiful today. I suppose you're going out. I thought I might. A little later. You going to ride? No, I'll take the sorry if I go. Go where? Oh, just Mary Ann. Do me a favor. What? If you do go, go see about that house I thought I saw. Matter of fact, that's what I thought I might do. Oh, you don't believe it's there. Well, I didn't yesterday. Anyways, I didn't see it. I told the judge, and he was kind of funny. There's some mystery about that house. Well, I don't want you upset, so this afternoon I'll ride around and see if I just can't solve it. Oh, who's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Who are you? You, uh, you don't recognize me? You know me? I do. And don't you know me? What? <laughs> No, should I? <laughs> Seems as if you are. What are you doing here? I I was looking for a house I thought I saw from up there on the ridge. There's no house here, Miss Stacy. I reckon you'd be Mary Ann. That's my name. I don't believe you said yours. I don't believe I did. Then I don't see how you could expect me to recognize... Oh, of course I know. You were the man on the train. That's part of it. What does that mean? Well, I won't tease you anymore. I must say, on the train, I didn't recognize you either. We know each other. We ought. You might call us kissing cousins. I don't follow. Well, we're not really related, but we do claim to be kin to the same man. Who? Judge Thurman. Of course, it's quite a spell since we met in Washington, and I guess we looked some different. I know you sure do. Bridge? <laughs> Bridge Thurman? The name I go by. Well, for heaven's sake, fancy meeting you here. But why aren't you home? Where have you been all this time since the train? I've been looking for myself. What? You know what you just tripped over? Look. <gasps> oh, my. it's a 
grave. And there's a headstone. It's hard to read. It's so covered with moss and weather struck, but I can tell you what it says. Bethel Ellen Winfield, born 1842, died 1861. An eye for an eye. In her time, she will find just retribution. Who was she? She was my sister. My father's grave is over there. No inscription for him. Your father? My real father, Colonel Damien Winfield. That's all that's left of us, me and two graves. You said you were looking for a house? There's nothing left of it but the foundation burned to the ground. When? In the war between the states in 1863, near as I can find out. But my sister saw it yesterday from the ridge over there. She saw it? Saw the house? Well, now, what did it look like? She said it was a handsome, big, red brick mansion. Why, so it was, by all accounts. You saw it, too? No, I... I didn't, because without my eyeglasses... They wouldn't have helped. There is no house at Winfield anymore. It died with my father. I think this is as far as I'll go. Aren't you coming home? Home? Where is that? Well, I'm... Marianne, I've told you all I know. Ever since the woman I always thought was my mother died and told me I was not her son, there's been a conspiracy of silence that denies me my birthright. The judge won't talk. Hattie dare not, I reckon. And if anyone else still alive knows the truth of how my sister died and how I lost my father, they're not talking, or I can't find them. I feel like a man without a soul, without a shadow. And until I find them, I cannot breathe free. What you ought to do, Miss Betty Lou, is settle down and have a nice nap before dinner. I can't, Hattie. I'm waiting for Mary Ann to come home. Well, she go along in good time. You ask me she's taking her own sweet time. You say she took the Surrey? Yes, sir. She say where she was going? Not to me. Well, she was going out to look for that house I saw. The one you won't talk about. She oughtn't have done that. Why ever not? Said she say there's no house? There isn't any more. You mean there was one once? A long, long ago. Was it a red brick one? Yes. But it don't do no good to dwell on it. Neither you nor Miss Mary Ann. If you saw any kind of house the other day, that was a ghost house. And you'd best forget it before you bring all the long, dead and gone haunts back to scare us into the grave with them. <laughs> Where it's just played exasperating. All the mystery with everyone. I told you, the house isn't there anymore. There's a foundation, but that's all. It isn't all. I know you too well. You're holding something back. Why can't you share your secrets with me? You always did. Well, this one I can't. Why not? Because it isn't mine to tell. <gasps> There's someone else. I didn't say. A man. Now, Betty Lou. Now, Mary Ann. It's not my secret, so I can't tell. Lord, what was that? I must be getting soft to the head. Sounds like someone tapping against my window pane. <gasps> Hattie, Hattie, it's me. I can see, Master Bridge. I got to talk to you. I Come down and let you in. No, not here. Meet me in the barn. Master Bree. Please. I've got to know, Hattie. I've got to have the truth. Let it be, honey lamb. It don't matter anymore. Where do I come from? Who am I? Why are my dreams haunted by a voice that keeps calling me back to the dead house at the bend of the river? Then hear me tell it. It's 20 years since, and I was a younger woman, and the judge was a young man with his father still alive. Old Judge Scott, that was. And his best friend was the colonel, Colonel Winfield, your father, who owned the big red brick house by the bend of the river, where everyone who worked the fields of the house was free and clear. My father was that old? You come along in autumn time. 
Your sister Bethel Ellen was way ahead of you by 10 to 11 years. And she was promised to marry Judge Thurmond. Only the old judge had to back down. How? Why? They was bad times, the war times. And family turned against family, father against son, friend against friend. Well, Virginia declared for the Confederate States the colonel would have no part of it. He was for the Union. And the old judge called him traitor and said no son of his could marry into a blue coat family. And Judge Thurman felt the same as his father? I reckon. He hadn't much choice. He was called to the army and he took off, leaving your poor sister carrying his child. Oh, good Lord. And she, poor child, with nowhere to turn, took a long step off of Tully's Ridge and found her own peace. Killed herself? And her child. The colonel was like a wild man. He'd come up here to call Judge Thurman out, but he was gone. So he stood in the courtyard and swore. Oh, Lord, I can hear him now. Damn you on all your broom, Jeff Scott. May you rot in hell. But I tell you, I will have my revenge. If it takes me to the trumpet sounds and all the dead rise. I will take a daughter from your house to fill the rest of my day. What did he mean? I said he stood there in the courtyard, but he was no mortal man. Because the people of the country with the war fever had risen against a Union man and shot him dead and burned the house to the ground. You were the only one escaped. You mean it was a ghost who threatened the judge's father? We all saw him and we heard him. But he was long dead before we did. It was a haunt, sure enough, Master Bridge. And time's been winding up to this moment when it looks like some way the curse is about to come home to roost. Not such a simple little story as you can see after all. And what we have seen is only past history which is now about to catch up with the present. Which of our two sisters is the one threatened? Or are we starting at shadows? And if a girl is dragged back into the shadows of yesterday, what agency can save her? I shall return shortly with Act Three. Hey there, it's spring. It's time to put on a happy yard. And the best way to do that is with big savings on lawn and garden tools from True Temper. Swing into spring and summer. Put on a happy yard. True Temper's got your number. It's really not that hard. Starting your vegetable garden, the True Temper finest quality digging fork is a must. Helps you penetrate the toughest, hardest packed ground fast. For one of the best shovels you'll ever own, get the True Temper Rocket Shovel, the first all steel shovel with a handle that's twice as strong as wood. These and other True Temper tools are on sale now. We'll save you lots of money. Save on the very best. Just so it's bright and sunny, True Temper does the rest. And here's to a great spring, the True Temper way. Put on a happy yard. See your True Temper dealer soon for special spring savings. You probably don't go to your True Value hardware store just to buy batteries. You probably just pick some up just because you happen to see them at the checkout counter. But here's a good reason to go to your True Value hardware store just to buy batteries. You can get a four-pack of Rayovac C or D-size batteries for just 77 cents. You might not think you need batteries right now, but remember those times when you needed a flashlight and the batteries were dead? Or the time you were going to the beach with your portable radio without batteries? Those are not the times to buy batteries. Now's the time. Get a four-pack of Rayovac C or D-size batteries for just 77 cents at participating True Value hardware stores. No matter where you live, you'll find a True Value hardware store nearby to serve you. True Value Hardware, it's more than just a name. WBBM Chicago. In the barn, half lit by the patches of moonlight that slant across its floor, 
two figures are frozen. The shadows accent the gaunt, stricken face of Bridge, while the moonlight glistens like tears on Hattie's broad, compassionate one. For a moment, it seems that in this flash of revelation, the whole world stands still. Behind the bales of hay, shocked and ashamed to have eavesdropped inadvertently on so personal a history, Marianne shrinks back, as if wishing that the night would open up and swallow her. Master Bridge? Yes, Hattie, what is it? You could come home. The judge, he's mighty lonely. As he deserves to be. He walked out on my sister when she was carrying his child. Well, maybe he didn't know that. He must have known. How can you say that? What difference does it make? He killed Beth L. Allen just the same as if he'd put a gun to her head. I reckon with my father dead, I'm just going to have to carry out his curse and pay him back. No, Master Bridge. The judge is very sick with the cancer. It's going to bring him low. He's beyond all of us. Just a sad man who cries for some loving hand to keep him company in the shadows. Why do you think he has his two little nieces here now? Hattie, what do you expect me to do? I just wish you would come on home. This isn't my home. Piers like it's the closest to what you ever had. No. The judge needs you. If you don't come on here, where can you go? I don't belong here. Where do you belong? Where? That's a question I wish someone could answer for me. Because I can't answer it for myself. Go on back in, Hattie. Leave me to find out where I'm going by myself. I can't leave you this way. There's no way you can solve it. It's got to be up to me. Goodbye, Hattie. Goodbye, Master Bridge. But you're wrong as wrong can be if you don't know this is your place. My place? I have no place. Who wants me? Bridge. Who's that? Mary Ann Stacy. What are you doing here? I I want to apologize. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. You heard? Yes. What right had you? None. Except what I took for my own. What do you mean? I was awake. I was haunted by your house and and other things. And then I... I couldn't help it. I saw you from my window, turning and going towards the barn. And I... I felt I had to talk to you, so I came down. I didn't know Hattie was fixing to join you. I called her down to get the truth. And you heard. Yes, I heard. And I still say what I said before. Let the past go. Why would you be interested? Oh, Bridge, I don't need my eyeglasses to see one thing clear. What's that? I love you, Bridge. Scarce even know me. I don't have to. No, nor me. Why couldn't we have met before? Oh, what's the difference now we have? I'm tied to the past. There's no way I can live in the present. Goodbye, Marion. Where are you going? I don't know. Heaven help me, I don't know. If you need me, call on me. Oh, I'd do anything for you. I want to help you, Bree. Bridge. Bridge. Who's there? It's Mary Ann, Hattie. Why, little miss, what are you doing up this late? I was in the barn. I heard it all, you and Bridge. Oh, sweet Lord. I want to pray with you for him, for us all. Too late for prayers, Miss Mary Ann. We just have to hope the Lord will provide. Come on away upstairs. Let me see you to bed. No, I can manage. You love him just as much as I do. I can see that, child. So let me tuck you in snug and hope I'm saving you for him. Come home, home. Where? To 
the house by the bend of the river, the house that claims you forever and ever and ever. Mary Ann? Yes, Betty Lou. Were you talking to someone? No, honey. Are you going back to sleep? You got a fever you have to get rid of. Oh, why did I have to get this old cold? I feel like I'm missing things. What are you doing up? Nothing to worry you. Just go back to sleep. Oh, where are you going? I don't rightly know. Go to sleep, Betty Lou. I just can't keep my eyes open. Just tell me where you're going so I can sleep. Just to look once more for that red brick house you thought you saw. Where am I going? Through the dark night. What called me out? The voice of my lover or the voice of the past? Why am I riding blind and terrified? Because I know that I have no life without Bridge. I want no life without him. Somehow, I know I can't find him unless I... Oh, no. Oh, what happened to me? Where am I? At the foot of Tully's Ridge, Bethel Ellen, the horse threw you and you fell all the way. Bethel Ellen? No, I'm not. Who are you? Colonel Winfield, child. Your father. Come on now, Bethel Ellen. I am not Bethel Ellen. You're all I have left of her. Come along now. Where are we going? We're going home. At last, we're going home. This is the red brick house. The house at the bend of the river. I can't go in there. Why not? Because it isn't there anymore. There isn't any house. It's where you belong. With me, Bethel Ellen. I'm not Bethel Ellen. And I don't belong to you. I can't belong to you. You're dead. That's right. I'm dead. That's why you belong with me. What are you saying? I swore Judge Thurman would have to provide me a daughter to take Bethel Ellen's place. That's why you do belong here. And you belong to me. Because you're dead. No! No, Father, she is not dead. Don't mix in this bridge. You're only a child. A little more than a child now, Father. Now, what is now? Now is the present fighting the dead way to the past. Now is my growing up and facing honestly that there's nothing I can do for my sister. Ever could do. But I can do something for Mary Ann. I won't let you, Father, or anyone have her. I'll fight that till I'm dead myself. <laughs> Yes? Who is it? Harry? Harry, it's Betty Lou. Open up. I'm coming. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'll be right there. Here I am, child. What are you doing out of bed? It's Barry Ann. It, she coming down with a cold, too? No, Hattie. She's gone. What do you mean, gone? I woke up, and I, I was just so woozy, and, and I saw Mary Ann was up and dressed in the middle of the night, and I asked what she was doing, and she said for me to go to sleep, not to worry, and, and then I... Oh, drifted off. But the last thing I remembered was she said something about going to look for the red brick house. <gasps> oh, no. She wouldn't go to that ghost place. All right, now, Betty Lou. We're up top of Teller's Ridge. Just you show me from where you and Mary Ann saw this house. It's hard to tell at night in the rain. But I remember a big tree like that on the edge of the bluff right over there where we... What was that? Well, it's just a horse went in. There. See? Saddled and bridled right over by the tree. Wait a minute. That's Brigadier. 
One of the horses you and Mary Ann have been riding. That's the one she must have ridden out tonight. Don't you go out in that rain with your cold. I have to. Mary Ann must be hurt. Well, I'll, I'll come with you. Don't you need me behind? Where, where are you going, Betty Lou? She must have been thrown. She can't see in the light, let alone in the dark. Oh, I'm just praying she didn't go over the bluff. Here, darling, let me put a cape around you. Never mind me. Let's just think of my sister. <gasps> what is it? Look. There. Now the rain just stopped and the moon came out. That's the bend in the river where I saw the house. Oh, could you look too? Now you can see it just as plain. The house. No. That's not possible. <laughs> You are father, but I'm not, and neither is Mary Ann. She came in answer to my voice. She wouldn't be here if you weren't replacing the daughter I lost. I claim this girl for my own. I promise you I'm not going to let you win. What's that? The present, catching up with you, father. The present that I'm going back to and taking Mary Ann with me. Wish me luck. All right, son. And rest in peace, Father. Maybe now at last, I can. Master Bridge, it's us. You got Mary Ann there? Yes, Hattie. Is she all right? She's had a bad fall, head injuries, concussion. Why, Bridge, son, how come you're here? Fate or the good Lord, I guess. Can't let Mary Ann be exposed anymore. We've got to lift her carefully and bring her... Bring her home. Uh, maybe that's what it's going to be. At last, Hattie, if all goes well. No. No, I don't want to be dead. I don't want to be... Hush, darling. Dead. It's all right. You're not. You're here. Here? In the land of the living. Oh, yes, With me. But I, I... In what's going to be my home and yours. Not the... The brick house? The brick house is dead and gone forever. Bridge, how can we be sure? Because it's only lived in my mind, in the mind of a ten-year-old boy who was all that survived it, and in whose memory never quite died. Until tonight. Tonight? Tonight I had to make a choice between yesterday and tomorrow. Now. Wasn't very difficult. You are the sum of all of them. Just get well. So I can spend the rest of my life with you. Which brings the curtain down on our little story. Which, as it evolved, became quite involved. And which also served to prove that, though our heroine was slightly short-sighted, in the long run, she had an eye for the right man to buy her the future. I'll be back shortly. The grass may be greener on the other side of the fence, but if it's taller on your side, you need a new lawnmower from your True Value hardware store. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you about a few of the many kinds of Lawn Chief power mowers designed to make cutting your lawn easier. Like a Lawn Chief 20-inch rotary power mower for just $109.99. It features a three and a half horsepower engine with an easy lift starter and fingertip height adjusters. True Value hardware stores also offer a Lawn Chief rear bagging rotary mower. It mows close to trees, through fence gates, and in tight spots. Plus, this time-saving lawn mower cuts a 21-inch path and comes with its own rear grass catcher. If the grass seems taller on your side of the fence, it's time to invest in a new mower. See the complete selection of Lawn Chief power mowers, from rotary models to self-propelled rear baggers and riding tractors, only at participating True Value hardware stores. True Value, that's more than just a name. That's their way of doing business. And by the way, tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Adolf Hitler never even knew the name of the man who caused his defeat. The man who masterminded the international intelligence network that halted the Nazi war machine. Read William Stevenson's A Man Called Intrepid. The true story of the most decisive secret operations of World War II. And the super spy who controlled them. 
A Man Called Intrepid, the big bestseller from Ballantine Books, where paperbacks are sold. If you read only one thriller this year, make it A Man Called Intrepid. What if you were swept up in disaster? Help! I miss what if your kid were drowning? Just retracting. What if your father were dying for blood? And what if nobody cared? Red Cross cares about a lot of things that cost a lot of money. But we think life is worth it, don't you? We're counting on you. Red Cross is a good neighbor. A good neighbor is you. Adjustment and reconciliation might have been achieved between Bridge and his foster father, Judge Thurman, was, perhaps fortunately, never tested. Because exposure to the night air when Mary Ann was discovered resulted in a severe pneumonia, which his frail health was unable to withstand, which might, in his own way, have been the finger of fate or of retribution. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Mason Adams, Morgan Fairchild, and Petoniak, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. caught that great community motor spirit. The people have a lot to do with it. And here I felt, you know, like if there was something wrong with the car, I could bring it back without any problem. Dwayne Reed caught the spirit, too. I trust Di and the people. If you trust them, it's not necessary to go shopping in a million different places. Get in on the fun at 5900 West 159th Street for a Pontiac, Honda, or GMC truck. Catch that great community motor spirit. The treatment that I've gotten that community has always been like I was dealing with friends. There's a spirit going round, so why don't you come on down? It's that great community for the spirit has just for you. It's that great community for the spirit has just for you. CBS News, President Carter is expected to urge voluntary restraint on the part of business and labor rather than wage and price controls when he discusses inflation with reporters at his morning news conference. I'm Mitchell Krause reporting on the CBS radio network. The announced purpose of the news conference to lay out the Carter administration plan for attacking the increasing rate of inflation, which some observers say was a major reason for the presidential decision to withdraw support for that $50 a person tax rebate. The other reason was said to be the better-than-expected rate of economic recovery, something borne out late Thursday by the 1.4% jump in industrial production during March released by the Federal Reserve Board. It was the biggest rise in that economic barometer in 19 months. The good economic news notwithstanding, big business was put on notice Thursday that President Carter is serious about his campaign promise to deal with monopolies. Hal Walker reports. Attorney General Griffin Bell places the Carter administration firmly behind efforts to break up monopolistic American corporations. Bell's proposal would take the biggest cases, those which often take more than 10 years to litigate in the courts, back to Congress for legislative action. I believe that vigilant antitrust action serves a vital role in guaranteeing that enterprise is truly free to produce and that consumers are truly free to choose. Consumer advocate Ralph Nader applauded Bell's approach. 
the Attorney General Bell statement is both unprecedented in the post-World War II period, plus it augurs very well for the uh, belief in some circles in Washington uh, that the Carter administration really believes in a competitive, not a monopolistic economy. But Nader said his group would take a wait-and-see attitude until Bell's general proposition is translated into specific legislation. Hal Walker, CBS News, Washington. New trouble for the Concord. That story after this. This is Howard Cosell admitting that rich as my fund of information is, there is one subject I still haven't mastered, CB radio. However, many people are equally uninformed, so for everyone I questioned General Electric. Their answers illustrate why GE is expert in CB. Listen to the words of Jim Whidden, GE electronic technician. Jim, why should I buy GECB? Because uh, we build them better than we have to. And idle boast till you prove it. Easily, our units are designed not only to meet, but to exceed FCC guidelines. An excellent start. They're designed for better isolation of adjacent channels, which means less channel spillover, and to minimize interference with nearby TVs and stereos. I'm sold. Building them better than they have to. Another reason to buy GECB. Now, this is Howard Cosell saying, GE, that's more than you can say about any other CB. The supersonic Anglo-French Concorde plane is facing more trouble in its fight to win acceptance in the United States. As long as four years ago, government analysts concluded that the Concorde runs a significant increase in the risk of fire and explosion when compared with traditional subsonic jets. The information was released by the Environmental Defense Fund, which obtained the hitherto secret report from the Federal Aviation Administration under the Freedom of Information Act. As far as getting permission to land in New York, Concorde faces new obstacles. The Port of New York Authority, which operates Kennedy International Airport, adopted a resolution at its annual meeting Thursday reaffirming its Concorde ban and creating a panel to obtain the views of area residents before reopening the case. A rapidly spreading fire demolished the clubhouse and grandstand of a major horse race track in New Jersey Thursday. The Garden State Park facility, built in the early 40s, burned to the ground during the afternoon racing program. Almost 10,000 people were able to get out without incident, but at least 20 people were injured or overcome by smoke, and one fire chief died of a heart attack. According to trainer Richard Murphy, none of the 1,500 horses in stables at the time was hurt. If the wind would have been blowing towards the stable area, we'd have probably lost the whole stable area. But because it was blowing opposite and going towards the road, uh, you know, it really took a lot of heat off. See, once horses smell smoke, they go crazy. And uh, there'd have been horses loose all over the place, and the heat would have caused the barns to go up. Needless to say, racing for the remainder of the spring is not likely at Garden State. Now this message. Adolf Hitler never even knew the name of the man who caused his defeat. The man who masterminded the international intelligence network that halted the Nazi war machine. Read William Stevenson's A Man Called Intrepid. The true story of the most decisive secret operations of World War II. And the super spy who controlled them. A Man Called Intrepid. The big bestseller from Ballantine Books, where paperbacks are sold. If you read only one thriller this year, make it A Man Called Intrepid. Hello, I'm Marlo Thomas, and I'd like to tell you about Catholic Relief Services. Last year's CRS Relief and Development Programs reached over 20 million needy people. After earthquakes in Guatemala and Italy, CRS was among the first to react to the human cry for help. Meanwhile, its self-help programs continued in over 60 nations. CRS needs your assistance as it responds to the needs of a hungry world. Please support Catholic Relief Services, New York 10022. Thank you. The longshoreman strike, which began just 24 hours ago, will not have any effect on shipping for several days because many of the ships involved are still at sea. But the Postal Service warns, beware there will be delays in some overseas mail.